Hello and welcome. My name is Ivan Boyer and I am one of the architects in technical business development here at Palo Alto Networks. In this tutorial, I will show you how to use Ansible with our custom Palo Alto Networks Ansible modules. For those that might not be aware, Ansible is the uh, configuration and the orchestration tool which can be used to provision and configure Palo Alto Networks devices in cloud as well as in a physical environments. Our Ansible library is open sourced and freely available at our GitHub page, as well as part of the commercial Red Hat Ansible distribution. For the support or more information about Palo Alto Network's Ansible modules, you can go to our live page or any of the following links. All the files for the following tutorial can be downloaded from our GitHub page. Before we can run our playbooks, we have to install a set of requirements, prerequisites. Uh, this is no different than what you would have to do with any other software distribution, and this is something that has to be done only once. So let, let's go ahead. Um, on the screen displayed, uh, you'll see on the left side the playbooks, and on the right side commands I'm executing. So you can kind of monitor what's going on at the same time. Uh, the playbooks are just the typical text files and you can't really, um, you can open it with any text editor of your choice. So the first thing we got to install is the AWS library called Boto. pip installer for that. Uh, this is distributed with every Python release. So here we go. What it does is pulling all the packages from the internet. The next thing we have to install is the uh, uh, another piece of the Amazon itself. And just so you know, uh, if you're not using Amazon, then you probably will have to install Azure or some other uh, scripts for that. Uh, the next thing is installing the Ansible. And the Ansible is really the core package, which contains all the playbook runners and, and, and a few other utilities. Almost done, installing all the required libraries that the Ansible needs. You might have some of these already. And the last thing we have to install is uh, our Palo Alto Networks Ansible modules. And for that we use uh, the Galaxy, Ansible Galaxy, which is just a, a central repository of all the uh, Ansible modules. And there we go. So now that all the prerequisites have been installed, we can go ahead and run our playbook. So let's first make sure that we are in the directory where the playbooks are located, and in particular this one. This one is part of the AWS samples. Provision firewall with a S rule, okay. And it's on the left side. So let's take a peek on what's going on here. So the first thing is we say we're going to use our Palo Alto Networks Ansible modules. Uh, and then very important thing is that we're going to include a file called wars.yaml. This is where you keep all your credentials. And this is something you would have to change based on your infrastructure, based on your settings, uh, some other parameters you want to use. Not all of these are used all the time. Uh, I'm using the same file for multiple playbooks. So you can obviously um, give this as short or as, as, as big as possible that you want. Um, so let's see what's going on next. So the first part of this playbook is has to deal deals with the instantiation of the um, the firewall itself in AWS. And for this, we use some of the AWS Ansible modules. These are the Boto library we developed. Uh, we downloaded. I'm sorry. The next thing is the uh, we're actually using our modules to connect to the firewall, change the admin password from the default one, and the uh, also uh, set up the DHCP on the um, on the data ports. So Ethernet one and Ethernet two. So we're gonna run the playbook. And as simple as that. And what's happening now? Ansible goes through every single task. And he's pretty much displaying what's going on, and it will um, let you know, uh, uh, you know, if there is any progress or is potential an error or something else. 
So the first step, which takes a little bit of time here, is actually instantiating the firewall. But this is not all, this is instantiating the firewall in AWS. And this is not only instantiating the firewall. What it does, it also creates uh, a new VPC, creates some subnet groups, uh, creates some uh, uh, routing configuration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this can be as complex or as simple that that you know depends on your topology. I mean, some of these may be already done. So in which case. We wouldn't even have to provision the firewall. We can just run playbook against the already existing um, already existing the firewall. Uh, so let's see. Uh, this process takes uh, a couple of minutes. It all depends on how busy AWS is. Uh, I've seen it go from a minute to you know even eight minutes. Okay. So at this point, okay, the environment have been instantiated, and the uh, firewall has created a uh, EAP or Elastic uh, IP for our management interface. And at this point, we are uh, provisioning the firewall. So while the uh, topology and while the environment has been provisioned, the firewall takes some time to boot. Again, this can take up to the five minutes. So I fast forwarded, you know, about five minutes of the uh, provision going on. And at this point, our firewall have been instantiated. Our SSH prompt is uh, ready. And we are going to go ahead and uh, set up the uh, admin password and also uh, configure the interfaces. So there you go. We configure Internet for DHCP, Internet 1 for DHCP, Internet 2 for DHCP. And now we issue the commit. And commit is going on, and shortly, there we go, we're done. So now that our firewall has been provisioned, let's uh, take a look at what's going on at the instance. So the first thing we have to do, we have to look uh, and, and definitely make sure, uh, make a note of the IP that's been provisioned to us. This one. Let's copy that IP so you can put it in a browser. There we go. So keep in mind that our password to be assigned to this firewall is admin. So let's use it to log in. Let's check um, if our data interfaces are set for DHCP. This book shows the first time firewall being instantiated. There we go. Two interfaces up and running to the DHCP addressing assigned by the uh, AWS. So now that we have a firewall provision, let's run another playbook, which is going to set a couple of sample rules, in a, a sample security rules in our firewall. So first make sure that our VARS file contains the IP provision to us of the firewall. This is because we're running these two playbooks separately. If they're part of the same playbook, you wouldn't have to do this. We would be able to get this data out of the provisioning step. And then uh, this playbook on the left will, like I said, set like four rules, uh, CDN, multimedia, catch all, uh, some other complex rule, just as the, as the sample rules on the firewall. So let's take a peek at the firewall. This is our file we just provisioned and the uh, no rule set currently. Go back and execute the playbook. Simple as just giving the Ansible playbook command the name of our playbook, which is on the left side of the screen. And there we go. Rule one, rule two, a couple more rules, and it's all done. It happens pretty quickly once you have firewall provision. So let's check the firewall, make sure the rules are there. Refresh. 
And there we go. All rules now exist in our firewall. Pretty much each rule corresponds to the each task on the right side. This concludes our basic tutorial.